What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over part 12 of the Blueprint Only Input Buffer tutorial series. Where we left off with this series was basically catching up all the components to make them work together so that we could have the charge attacks, the multi-input attacks, and all of our commands in the command list being prioritized by what was the highest complexity. All these systems and all these components working together and that worked in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. But a few of you want to take it a step further and go to enhanced input in Unreal Engine 5. And so that's what we're going to be covering today. Being completely straightforward, this episode is not required. Everything I cover in the Blueprint Only Input Buffer Tutorial series will work in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 with the current system. Starting at Unreal Engine 5.1, the input actions and input axes methods of getting inputs and passing them along to the character controller to do actions has been deprecated. What this essentially means, Epic doesn't intend to release any updates for these systems anymore, so how they work currently is how they're going to work until they are eventually fully removed, or if they're left forever, they're just going to always stay in that state. At the current time of making this episode, input actions and input axes aren't going anywhere, and they still work, so feel free to continue to use them. However, if you do want to go and start using enhanced input, checking that out, all that it has to offer, that's what we're going to be covering today. And it should be exciting and fun, and everything's still going to work the exact same way that we had it. So don't worry, by the end of this episode, we're going to use enhanced input, but everything's going to work as if you never changed anything at all. I don't have too much to show today because we're just kind of changing the system, revamping it a little bit to meet this other method of input if you decide to use it. So we'll hop right into this episode. But before we do, if you want to get caught up in the series, this is episode 12 of the Blueprint Only Input Buffer series, and so you may run into some trouble if you just try and implement this episode without using my other episodes that I have for the Blueprint Only Input Buffer. So I'd recommend clicking on this link in the top right corner right here if you haven't already, and that will bring you to the first episode of the Blueprint Only Input Buffer so that you can see how we created this thing and how our logic is working. But if you've already done that or you don't care about that and you want to hop into the enhanced input usage with the input buffer, I do recommend that you click on this icon in the top right corner right here, which is for enhanced input basics. This is a video I have on enhanced input and it goes into more depth than I will today for a lot of the enhanced input components. So it might give you a better understanding of what we're implementing today and why you may want to use it. Finally, I just want to say thank you to my Patreon and YouTube membership subscribers for continuing to support me and keeping this series alive. I'm really grateful to you all, and I just really appreciate it, so thanks again, guys. With all of that out of the way, we can get started. What we're doing is making sure that we're using the enhanced input system for our input actions and input axes. So if we go to Edit, Project Settings, and get this window to load and go to the Input section. Here is a list of all of our action mappings and axis mappings that we have in our project. You can still open these up even though it says axis and action mappings are now deprecated. Please use enhanced input actions and input mapping context instead. Now once you open these up you'll see all of your action mappings and axis mappings. I have a lot of extra ones in here because I'm using my third person tutorial series which uses some code. But we are only worried about the blueprint components and what we need for the input buffer today, the blueprint only input buffer. So any input actions, uh, action mappings, or axis mappings that you see that are expanded here are ones that we have supported within the blueprint only input buffer. For example, the jump action mapping is used within the input buffer, and so you see that I have expanded, and you can see all of my inputs that would relate to the jump function. Any action or axis mappings that are closed, such as the sprint or heal, means that we don't actually need them or use them in the input buffer, so I'm ignoring them for this episode. So I have jump, I have add input to buffer. Now, I don't actually use this one currently, but I did show support for it in the series, so I'm still showing you that one. Special action one, special action two, menu up, menu down, menu left, menu right. Menu forward and menu right are axis mappings, and I also don't currently use them, but there is support in the Blueprint Only Input Buffer for them, so I'm showing them here as well. So these are the action axis mappings that I'm using in my Blueprint Only Input Buffer, and thus those are the ones we're going to need to keep track of today using our enhanced input system. 
Now I am done with this window for now, but we are going to need it to kind of transfer some data over. So you might want to keep it open. But first things first, make sure you are on engine 5.1 or higher. If you're not, you can still access enhanced input in version five, but it's a little bit different. It's more experimental. So I'd recommend that you're on 5.1. If you are, what you can do is make sure that you're using the enhanced input components. This should happen by default, but if you just search for enhanced input anywhere in your project settings window, you'll get some options that pop up such as the engine enhanced input editor only and engine input sections. Both of these sections should be using enhanced player input classes instead of regular player input classes. The editor one usually only has one option, so you don't have to worry much about that, but this engine input section should be using the enhanced player input class for the default player input class. So instead of using standard player input, make sure it's using enhanced player input. And for the default input component class, make sure it's using enhanced input component and not the standard input component. Both of these changes should happen automatically when upgrading your engine. I was previously on 5.0.3 and I upgraded the 5.1 for this episode and this was done automatically. But just make sure as we do need that to be the case to implement today's episode. Now, as I said, I'm going to keep my input settings up here and I'm gonna go into my blueprints and I made a new folder called enhanced input. This isn't required, but I recommend it because we are going to have a lot of things that we're going to add today. But don't worry, they're mainly copies of each other. And we're just going to set up our input actions a little bit differently. In that episode I linked toward the start of the video, I went into more depth about why Enhanced Input does it this way. But now Enhanced Input has you create little input actions as objects in your file explorer. So they're not in your project settings anymore. They are in your content browser and you just create them. They are a data asset of input action. So essentially you're creating a new class for an input action each time you go and do this. Getting started, let's add one. So we can press add and go to input and select input action. When you select this, it's gonna just make you name it something. I have just called everything enhanced and then the name of the input action for ease on today's episode. So we can transfer everything over but it's not required that you write enhanced before them like I did. You could just write jump, you could just write attack one, move down, move left, move right, move up, special action one, special action two. But for my naming convention, if you see enhanced, you know that this is an enhanced input, input action. And it doesn't matter which one we start with, I'll start with the first one here, which is attack one. And so if we go into this input action, you'll see that we have a few settings here. None of them are super important, and actually I'm going to leave pretty much everything default. I have added a description, but the description isn't required. It is just to describe what this input action is going to be used for. So I just gave it a random kind of boilerplate text here. And I said the attack one input, because that's what this is. This enhanced attack one is just going to represent when the player presses a button that is bound to the attack one action in the game. I go over all these settings in the enhanced input episodes. They're not super important to go over now, but the main thing is that you don't need to check any of these or change any of these. The value type of Boolean is fine for almost all of our cases. It'll be a little bit different for movement if we want to capture the value, but a digital bool basically means it supports a press and a release. So that is our standard input action. That is what we use for input presses like that's what we were using before for jumping that's what we were using before for attacking it just wasn't labeled as such but the value type of boolean is perfectly fine we don't need to put any triggers or modifiers in here by default but triggers and modifiers are used to determine how we can actually trigger this enhanced input input action modifiers do other things like having dead zones and changing the value based on other parameters that you have in your game just make sure you make an input action object for each of your input actions that you're going to want in your blueprint only input buffer. I have attack one, like I said, jump, move down, move left, move right, move up, special action one, and special action too. 
And once you have all these, we can actually start binding them to inputs, you know, specific keys or buttons, and then determining what happens when those inputs or buttons are pressed. And to do that, we're going to want to use a mapping context. So a mapping context is exactly what it sounds like. It provides a context to the character or the controller to say the player is in this state. So we want to do this action when they press this button. Good example of this is if the character is walking around on the ground and they press a button, it might do a different action than if the character is mounted on a horse and they press that same button. Or if the character is in a mini game and they press that same button. Those could be different contexts and thus you could do different actions with them. So let's go to add and let's go to input and let's make an input mapping context. It'll make you name it. I just call it the base mapping context because this is going to be my default context for everything. And this is what we want to actually use to provide actions for our character using the input buffer. So if we go into the context, we can go to this section here that says mappings. It'll be empty. And you can press the little plus sign here to add individual input actions and map them when using this context. So press plus to add one and then select the drop down. And from here, you can select any of your input action class objects that you've created. So I have all of mine that I just created a few minutes ago. And once you select one, you can then open up that individual input action and then you can bind keys to it. So you can press the plus sign here to add a control binding to the action mapping. And then this is just like the project settings. So if we go to our project settings, this is enhanced jump. Well, it jumps right here. So I want to use my space bar or my gamepad face button bottom, which is like the A button on an Xbox controller. There's technically an Oculus touchpad here as well, but I didn't put that in. That came default when the engine was upgraded. And I'm not using a touch device, so I haven't removed it, but I also don't need it. If you need it, then by all means use it. But what I am doing now is I'm using my input actions in here and mapping them to the same values that were in my project settings. So I have all the same controls. So for enhanced jump, I use space bar and gamepad face button bottom. Again, you can add more bindings by pressing this plus here. So you can have as many as you want. And if you want to delete them, just press the little trash can to remove the map. Now, go through and do this for all of your inputs that you have for your input buffer. So my next one is enhanced attack one. And that is bound to the one key only. I don't have controller support for that one. Enhanced special action one. That is special action one. And that is the Z key. Enhanced special action two. That is special action two. And that is the X key. Then I have enhanced move up. That is menu up in my case, and that is the W key. Enhance move down. That is menu down, and that is the S key. Enhance move left. That is menu left, and that is the A key. And then enhance move right. That is menu right, which is the D key. If you're using add input to buffer, like we showed earlier in the Blueprint Only Input Buffer series, you can actually add that in here as well. And if you're using Move Forward or Move Right, which are axis mappings, you can put them in here too. But the axis mappings are slightly different than action mappings. And I'm going to go over that more in the next episode because we're going to really start to explore the benefits that enhanced input can give us in this series. And for now, I'm just making sure everything's working the same way it was. So I'm not going to go and use those axis mappings right now. But if you are familiar with axis mappings in enhanced input, you can feel free to add them to the mapping context as well. It won't cause any problems right now, and it can work exactly the same as our old axis mappings. I don't use the axis mappings in the base character BP currently anyway. I preferred the regular action mappings. But I will show full support with this in the next episode. So at this point, I have used everything that I need for my input buffer. So I'm going to actually close my project settings. We're not quite done in here yet, though. We need to open up each action or each input that we have tied to the input action. So we have enhanced jump, which has spacebar and gamepad face button bottom. If I open up spacebar, you'll get even more options. Triggers, modifiers, and is player mappable. 
So is player mappable? We're going to skip for right now. We don't need that. But triggers and modifiers we may need. The main one we need is triggers. But modifiers have a lot of different options that you may want or need in your game. I'm going to ignore modifiers for now. As we won't need them to line up all of our logic that we already have in our blueprint only input buffer. But triggers we absolutely do need. So if we go to triggers and press a little plus here to add an element, you will get an index zero element in the triggers array. And what we wanna set this to is the down section. This is another thing that I went over in the enhanced input basics, but the reason we wanna use down in this case is because we need to know in our input buffer if we've pressed or released an input. Even if we have those inputs, we have one for press, we have one for release, they can be triggered at different points. With this enhanced input system, it's a lot more complicated than just the regular input actions. It's not as simple as a press and release. They have all these different states. They have triggered, started, ongoing, canceled, and completed. So it's more complicated than just press and release. And so down is the perfect one for us. This allows us to know when the button is down. When it initially starts going down, that button can be considered pressed. When the down trigger is finished, that means the button is no longer being held down. Thus, it has been released. So we know on started, it is pressed. On completed, it is released. So down is a perfect way to get us to use everything in our blueprint only input buffer without doing too much in the enhanced input. And so I've made every single one of these have a trigger of down. I'm going to go through them all and just show you. But if you are familiar with enhanced input, you'll know that there are different ways you could accomplish this. So feel free to use one of your other methods to get your press and your release working. But this is a pretty solid method. And putting these triggers right in the context instead of on the input actions directly allows us to know that for this context, we will use them as only down. You don't have to make it any more complicated than it is. We just want to read the inputs that the player is pressing. Right now, all we're trying to do is make sure that the enhanced input system works the exact same way for our blueprint only input buffer. That way we don't have to go changing a bunch of stuff just to get the same logic working so that we end up in the same spot that we left off. Now our mapping context is complete. So at this point, you can close it or get out of it if you want. What I need to do now is go to my character. I already have it up here. So we're going to go to the base character BP. Now, there's one thing we have to do before anything else. So we're going to do that right away. Now, remember that this series is actually my third person tutorial series, but you don't need to copy any of this logic to get the blueprint only input buffer working. So you can ignore some extra nodes I have in here, like the game mode reference. If I don't comment on them, they're not important for this episode or for this series. But we should have a begin play in our character. We were calling our setup input actions function. This is a function we made earlier in the blueprint only input buffer series. So I'm not going to go over that. Again, we can skip over this logic here as that is for the third person tutorial. I've added something else at the end here. And that is how we actually trigger this character or set this character to use our correct mapping context, to use the mapping context that we created a few minutes ago. So our base mapping context, because by default, we are not going to have these enhanced input controls being listened for. They aren't like input actions where they're global. They only relate to that context. So we need to make sure our character is using the correct context to make sure we can actually use the proper events in here. And to do this, we need to get the controller because even though we are doing our listening for input actions on our character, the controller is what we need to grab the enhanced input local player subsystem, which is just a fancy node to allow us to alter or edit things with the enhanced input player system. And so if we get our controller and we cast to player controller, whatever your player controller type is, cast to it. For me, I'm using the default currently in the series. Regular player controller is perfectly fine. Then I can drag off the as player controller and I can search for this node directly. Enhanced input local player subsystem. 
and you want the one that's off of player controller, local player subsystems, get enhanced input local player subsystem. It's this crazy node right here. But really what this does is it just gets the reference to the enhanced input system on that controller. That's all you need to know. So you can drag off of it like any other node and then call functions on it. And we want to call it the add mapping context node. I'm going to use the regular one. We don't need the message here. So regular one is fine. And then all we have to do is link everything up, of course, and select the mapping context that we want. And we only have one right now. So we want to use our base mapping context. That's what I've done to get these four nodes here. I do it in begin play. So once the actor has spawned and been moved to the position that we want in the world, they're getting set up we can just automatically bind them and they can be in this mapping context right away. With that done, we can actually use our input actions that we just made in the mapping context and determine what happens when players press those buttons. So I'm gonna scroll down to here. This is my blueprint only input buffer logic. I was previously using my input actions. You know how you can search for any input action by just typing in the name and selecting the action event and it will bring up this node here i was using the pressed and the released on each of these actions and then calling a function that we made for the blueprint only input buffer called perform input logic well you can see i've disconnected every single press and release that we had as well as the axis bindings for move forward and move right and so none of that's happening anymore now at this point you could delete it but you don't have to delete it yet. Let's make sure we get the enhanced input working. And to do that, it's actually quite tricky. So we need to pass along the key that was pressed to the perform input logic because we have an input to input type map. So basically the A key is bound to the attack button or the S key is bound to the down button. And since we need the key, we were easily passing it from the input action directly into the key parameter on the perform input logic function. But it's not that simple anymore. We need to be able to get the key from an enhanced input action, which is harder than you might think. So first things first, let's get all of our enhanced input actions. Basically, you're just going to need every one that you use in your input buffer. You don't need all your enhanced input actions. That's why I only had that certain list that I used. To find them, it's super simple. You can just type in the name like enhanced jump, enhanced attack one, enhanced uh, special action one, whatever it is that you want to use, you select it and you'll get this big node. Now I've done that for every action that I had. And you can see that they all do the same logic and it looks simple, but this is a function that I created. When we go into this function in a minute here, you'll see how complicated it can really be. But what we need to know is what execution lines we should pull off of. So we have triggered, started, ongoing, canceled, and completed. I spoke about this earlier. As a little demo, if we use a print string on started and a print string on completed, and I'll make the top one started and the bottom one completed. You should see if I go and play my game and I press the jump button, it says started in the top left. I know it was kind of covered by the text, so I will show you the output log. We have a started and a completed. Now let's go back into the game and you can watch that output log still right here. The started, I'm holding the button, holding it, holding it. As soon as I release it, it says completed. So this is what that down trigger in our mapping context was doing. It starts when we press it, it started being down. It will remain down until we release it. Once you release it, it has completed. So that's how we know our press and release. You can remove these print strings, but we only need started and completed for today. These other ones are definitely useful, but they don't do what we want to do today. We also have an input action, which is the input action that causes this event to fire. That would be helpful, and it is helpful. This is helpful to actually receiving the key that we use to trigger this enhanced input action, but it's not as helpful as the regular passing along the key that we had. 
So I'm going to show you a more complex way to do it, but this is the way we have to do it for enhanced input actions, or at least this is one viable method to accomplish this. So I've made a new function by pressing the plus function here, and I've called it determine input used from enhanced input. Now we can go into that function right away. So this is my function. I have an input parameter. So if you select the purple starting node in the function or select the function on the list and go to the details panel, you can go to the input section and press plus to create a new input parameter. I've called it input action and we just want to pass along an input action type. So you can search for input action and select the object reference. We're going to pass in the input action from each of the enhanced input action boxes here into that parameter. And we're going to use it along with quite a bit of extra stuff to grab the actual key that we want. So we need to get our enhanced input local player subsystem again, just like we did in begin play. So you could either save a reference out to it in begin play or just get it again here like I did. So get controller cast it to your player controller, drag off your player controller and search for your enhanced input local player subsystem. Now, once you have these three nodes, we need to call a function on the enhanced input local player subsystem called query keys map to action. What this does is grab the keys that are bound to the input action that we passed it. So instead of just getting the individual key that was pressed like before on the input action, the old input action system, this is going to get any keys attached to this input action. So in the case of our context, the enhanced jump has two keys, spacebar and gamepad, face button, bottom. Each other action only has one key currently. So it's going to get all the keys related to that action and we're going to loop through them and determine which ones are pressed and released. Now, the input action that we want to pass into this function. So we get our query keys map to action. And we want to pass in the input action that is the parameter of the function. And that's what we're doing here. At this point, we have an array of all the possible values, even though a lot of mine only have one. Like I showed you with the enhanced jump, you could have one with more than one. And so we're going to want to drag off of the return value, which returns all of your possible keys. And we're going to loop through it with a for each loop. Now, off this for each loop, we can check to determine if the input is down or not. And remember, we have the trigger on our context for being down. So this is the perfect check to do. If it's down, it will return true. If it's not, it will return false. So is input key down actually comes from the controller. So you can drag off your controller and type is input key down. Perfect. So now get this node and then pass in the array element from the for loop. That is the key. That's the key that we're looking for. Remember that a key here can also be buttons on a controller. It's not an actual just key on a keyboard. That's just what they call it, a key structure. This returns a Boolean. So we want to perform a branch on that Boolean. And if it's true that this input key is down, we want to call our perform input logic function, the same function we're calling for the old input actions. And we want to pass along the key from the array element with a status of pressed. If the key is not down, false we want to call perform input logic as well passing along the key from the for loop but with a status of released and it might be a little confusing to look at first so in our old input actions we had a pressed and a released and it was super simple we could just say pressed released and we knew what we were doing here we don't have that luxury but is input key down we'll check and see if we are pressed or if we're released and what's better is when we go into our enhanced input action, started and complete, call this function. So if we start and we determine that the input is down, we know it's a press. But if we're calling this on completed, this completes when the enhanced jump input action has stopped being down, meaning it's been released. 
So when we determine what key it is that has triggered that completed logic from this for each loop by saying is input key down and returning false, we know that the status should be released. So it makes logical sense as well as just working by the nature of is input key down, but we can actually logic through it and determine what key it is that is pressed or released. Now, in all of your enhanced input actions that you have, call this function on started and completed and pass along your input action if you haven't done it for all of them already. And you can disconnect all of your input actions if you haven't done that already, your old input actions. Now with that in place, you should see in the top left, you'll see command one, command two, command three, command four, command five, print because I have a print string in my start command function that prints out the name of the command that has been triggered. So if I play my game and I trigger, let's say command one, there it is, command one in the top left, command two, Command four is for pressing the attack button, but when I release it, it is command three because I've held it for a long enough period of time. And command five is my multi-input attack, so I have to press two buttons at the same time. And there it is, command five. So we can use all of our commands that have already existed in the Blueprint Only Input Buffer tutorial series, but we can use it with enhanced input now. So if you are going the route of enhanced input, you have that method available to you as well as the regular input action system. With all that said, guys, we are good to go, and we can continue on making the Blueprint-only input buffer system better in the future. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please subscribe. It does more for me than anything else you can do, and it's completely free. If you did want to show extra support to the channel or to myself to keep working on these or pass along your own ideas for what you want to see, please consider checking out the Patreon or YouTube membership, or even just giving thanks with super thanks to send a little support my way. If you had any problems or need any help with this episode or any of my tutorial series, feel free to join the Discord community, and I'll be happy to help you out. That is also completely free. And anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.